And there we go. We are live on both channels. Good afternoon, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your other no shorty. And yes, we've got an extra bonus review today. Uh, what you want to say bonus for today? I mean, because it's Monday and I'm usually at home. Um, but we had a delivery today. I had to come into the shop. So I thought I'd read one of the ones I missed last week. Uh, the Ward by Kevin Scott. Art by Andre uh, Ponce. Um, and it's one that I was kind of looking forward to because I have delved into the work of Kevin Scott a couple of times now. And I have the most fun when he's doing his own thing. Uh, I think that's true of most creators, not exclusively, but I think when you take a, a, a really good writer and have them play in somebody else's sandpit, I think there is a tendency to, for them to maybe sometimes over-egg it a little bit and be absolutely determined to make something their own, or they're going to play it safe because they know this is a paycheck, and that kind of paycheck that they get it right for one of the big uh, companies doing stuff like Transformers or Star Wars or even X-Men or Avengers... Um, that kind of pays for them to be able to go and do something else where they know they're not going to make a big bunch of money, but it's what they really want to do. And the things of Cameron Scott's I've read that I've really enjoyed, it's been shadow service. I absolutely adore it. I've been getting it since it started. I am very happy with every single ep uh, issue. Um, uh, the artwork, the writing, it all comes together absolutely beautifully. Um, so when I saw they were going to do something else, which kind of in its own way fits into the urban fantasy kind of mold, I was like, absolutely, this is a, a comfortable wheelhouse for Cavan, and it's something which I think I'm going to really enjoy, because I, if nothing else, I just enjoy urban fantasy. Um, and I do like the story, and I like the characterizations, I like what they're building. There's one little beat that doesn't quite land for me, but for the most part, I found myself really enjoying it, um, with the exception of the artwork. Uh, individually, um, there's nothing really I could really complain about in terms of like characters and action sequences, uh, set pieces. Everything on its own works. It's only when you look at it on a larger scale and you realize that, once again, I'm probably going to be complaining about the fact that it's digital coloring, where the um, uh, the shades going from a lighter to a dark doesn't come across as natural because it's computer generated rather than a bit more organic. Uh, and I know this probably doesn't bother that many people. In terms of artwork, most people are going to be looking at lines and characters and action sequences, and that's totally fine. I get that. If the coloring doesn't bother you, you're going to actually have a lot of fun with this. But for me, I'd sometimes prefer just a little bit more of actual ink shading um, or just using different colors uh, rather than just sh uh, uh, shading one from light to dark. Um, it's it's something where it just makes it look a little bit impersonal for me. That's all it really is. Uh, but the characters as they're drawn are fantastic. You get a sense of who they are very quickly from the clothes they're wearing, uh, the hairstyles, how they stand, how they hold themselves. Uh, there's also some really nice nonverbal stuff in terms of their facial expressions, uh, including a character who has no face. Uh, and you have to rely a little bit more on the writing for that one to get across the character. But Cavan is well and truly up for that. And you generally get a sense of not only who this person is, but their relationship to the characters. And that appears to be one of the major things that uh, this comic was going for. Uh, we are dealing with a work environment and how people respond to the people in the work environment tells you a lot about who they are, uh, whether or not it's the bold brash youngster who believes he knows everything and really hates it when somebody tells him what to do because he assumes he knows better. Uh, but the person telling him isn't telling him to be an, a horrible person, I was going to swear there. Uh, they're doing it because they actually do know and they're in hospital and they're trying to help people. Um, it doesn't matter. Like Ego should be left at the door in this kind of situation. Um, it sometimes isn't, um, and like I don't think there's any portion of life where people can say ego does not play a part, uh, but Cameron kind of gets across this idea that it matters more to some people than others, uh, and the fact that it does matter to more than uh, people in different ways means that it's going to be some, a form of friction between characters. Uh, that's handled really well. You've also got some uh, backdrops to uh, past um, encounters, past relationships that are coming into play here. Um, effectively, the end character play is why I'm talking about getting this one, because yes, I kind of like the urban fantasy, but just having a hostel for uh, these kind of uh, creatures to be treated is something I've read before. Garth Ennis did it in the um, uh, Cinema Purgatorio anthology he was doing with Alan Moore, and a bunch of other people, Kieran Gillen, involved with that as well. Uh, and I think the humour uh, inherent in that uh, setting was a little bit more to my taste. Uh, this one feels like it's going a little bit more down the uh, House MD route, which is not actually a bad thing. I, the House is my favourite Sherlock, and uh, my favourite version of the Sherlock Holmes character I've ever encountered. Thoroughly enjoyable. But in this kind of comic book situation, this kind of scenario, this kind of setting, when you've got one issue and you have uh, effectively what could be a murder mystery, uh, trying to figure out what an injury was, unfortunately, you've only got so many pages to express the kind of information that's going to be necessary to figure it out. Um, and I figured it out very quickly. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think if you made it so obscure, especially when you've got so many pages to deal with, it could come across as frustrating and be like uh, some kind of weird Deus Ex kind of ending. As it was, you kind of see it coming when it happens. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be. No big deal there. It really doesn't take much in the way of um, 
uh, imagination to put these pieces together. Now I'm hoping he moves away from that and actually can just concentrate on the day-to-day -day kind of lives rather than worrying about medical mysteries. But if that's the way he goes, it might not be my cup of tea. It just kind of depends on what you want out of it. But I will say, artwork on the individual base is fantastic. The writing is great. Characterization is fantastic. And the relationships they've built up are absolutely worth it. You've got to worry about the setting and uh, what they're trying to do with it. If those kind of things are your cup of tea, you're going to get a lot from this one. Uh, that's it for me today. I'll be back tomorrow with new comic book day stuff and other things. Until then, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.